What if I tell you that there is one thing you can do to reduce your stress, reduce your insulin resistance, and lose weight? And it is easy, and it is fun, independent of your doctors, and you don't need a medication. Would you believe me? Okay, listen up. Stress levels are globally on an increase, but particularly in the United States. 83% of the people surveyed in the United States report that they're worried about the future of the nation. That's 83% means people on the right and people on the left. 83% of U.S. workers cite work-related stress as a major issue. 63% of U.S. employees say that they want to quit their job because of crazy stress at work. Stress is higher for women. That's because of they, unfortunately, are on the receiving end of more hate crimes and sexual offenses and having to deal with single-family parenthood situations and child care challenges. Studies show that chronic stress leads to elevate cortisol levels, which impairs insulin sensitivity, which is a major contributor to weight gain. Stress often triggers emotional eating, particularly craving for sugar and fat. This can lead, obviously, to weight gain, especially around the abdomen. Abdominal fat is particularly associated with insulin resistance and the development of metabolic syndrome. Chronic sleep deprivation, often caused by stress, reduces the body's ability to use insulin efficiently and therefore worsens insulin resistance. Chronic stress can trigger inflammation in the body and inflammation interferes with the normal functioning of the hormones and insulin receptors, making it harder for the body to metabolize glucose. Stress can lead to unhealthy behaviors like reduced physical activity, poor diet, increased alcohol consumption, all of which contribute to insulin resistance. Why am I bringing up insulin resistance all this time and stress? Because it's a major contributor to weight gain and in a vicious cycle relationship with weight gain because as you gain weight, your insulin resistance also goes down. So here's a study you can find on PubMed, uh, PubMed Central called Molecular Mechanisms Linking Stress and Insulin Resistance. It says, to date, there is ample evidence to support the strong relationship between stress and insulin resistance. In the current study, um, the one that I'm reading, uh, they surveyed the scientific literature for possible interactions between stress and insulin resistance and found that stress can impair glucose homeostasis working through at least six molecular pathways. So obviously I'm not gonna go into the biology, I'm not a biologist, so I don't really want to get myself into something I can't explain. <laughs> if stress increases insulin resistance and insulin resistance makes you fat and slow, then reducing stress should improve your situation and help you lose weight. Too many people try to do the diet and exercise piece right and don't see the results they expect, but that's probably because their stress levels are really high, so they're going, you know, they're battling the problem upstream. It's good that they're doing the diet and the exercise part, but it will be even better if they reduce stress. Some people do yoga, tai chi, meditation, but these practices are not for everybody, not appealing to everybody, or simply not accessible due to cost or location, depends on where you live. Not everybody lives in California and has access to 100 yoga classes within a 50 feet radius. To be sure, every little thing you do does help your stress level and to maintain healthy weight is great. But do not overlook the easiest, most fun way to help yourself. Drum roll. Increase oxytocin? <laughs> Sounds scientific.
and it's not something you can eat <laughs> but wait you will love it oxytocin is the hormone associated with attachment of mother and baby it's produced during pregnancy and lactation but not only it's called the hugging hormone for a reason intimate partners spending lots of time in each other's arms and swapping bodily fluids also become attached to each other thanks to this hormone. Some say that getting eight hugs a day, really good kind hugs from people that really care about you and give you really nice hugs will fulfill your daily oxytocin requirement and helps with uh, depression, mood stabilization and all that. So I, I don't know if this is true. I haven't checked it out, but I do know this. Oxytocin does reduce stress, according to another study, which says oxytocin has been revealed to work for anxiety suppression and anti-stress, as well as for psychosocial behavior and reproductive functions. Oxytocin neurons are activated by various stimuli. And recent studies suggest that, or this particular study suggests that oxytocin is also involved in stress-related disorders. It has been shown in clinical trials that oxytocin provides therapeutic benefits for patients diagnosed with stress-related disorders. Also, another study found a huge link between oxytocin and weight loss specifically. It's called oxytocin in metabolic homeostasis, implication for obesity and, man and diabetes management. And it says, uh, recent evidence indicates that oxytocin enhances glucose uptake and lipid utilization in adipose tissue and skeletal muscle. Deficiencies in oxytocin signaling and oxytocin receptor expression lead to obesity despite, despite normal food intake, motor activity, and increased lipid levels. So despite what you eat and how much you move, deficiency in oxytocin, it's going to tank your plan. Studies demonstrate that intranasal administration of oxytocin was associated with significant weight loss as well as improvements in insulin sensitivity. But wait, sticking things up your nose looks easy, but not that much fun. I promised you an easy and fun way to improve your insulin sensitivity, reduce stress, and lose weight. But before I reveal the big not-so-secret secret... secret Talking at a camera in an empty room feels a lot stranger than it looks. So give me thumbs up so I know someone's watching. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel and YouTube will show this video to more people. So let's check this out. The role of oxytocin in dog owner relationships. A number of studies have shown that when dogs and humans interact with each other in a positive way, for example, cuddling, both partners exhibit a surge in oxytocin, a hormone which has been linked to positive emotional states. Do you have a dog? Maybe you have no one to cuddle with and you have a dog? You are underutilizing your dog. Perhaps dogs are the angels on earth after all. If you have a dog, you can cuddle, play, take it for walks, hikes, and bike rides. It can go with you almost anywhere. It will listen to your gripes, never judge you, always wants to please you. It will be your buddy, your therapist, your trainer on the trail. And it will never tell 
anyone what you do in the bathroom. It appears now there is one more reason to call a dog man's best friend. Many people report better sleep with a dog nearby. Quality sleep is crucial in regulating hormones and affects insulin sensitivity. Dogs thrive on routines and they can help their owners have more consistent schedules for eating, for how they structure your day, both of which are important for managing insulin resistance because better routines is less stress. You always know what's coming. Dogs get people moving and yes, regular exercises improve insulin sensitivity, the exercises reduce stress and obviously it helps with weight loss as you burn more calories. Dogs provide emotional support and improve mental health for their owners, which reduces the likelihood of engaging in bad behaviors like overeating, overdrinking at night by yourself, that kind of stuff. My dog, that's my dog. <laughs> she wakes me up to cuddle with me every morning. I never say no. I probably spend 20 minutes or more every morning cuddling, petting, scratching, talking to my dog. It's just the best. I call her my oxytone bu oxytocin bucket. She demands it, actually. She'll get up on the bed and wake me up. I can't think of a better way to start the day. Um, we go on regular walks, so we do about five miles a day walking, and once a week, sometimes twice a week, we'll do a bigger hike, like about 10 miles. Um, she's a great traveler too, I find that I can take her almost anywhere. Um, and then she, she loves being with me, and she loves being with people, so she's an easy dog. The more you pay attention to your dog and the more you train it, the happier both of you will be. Remember, there are no bad dogs. There are only bad dog owners. Dogs do the best they know how. It's up to you to show them the way. Comment below with your dog stories. I don't know if you can put a picture there too. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for supporting Life Intelligence.